Welcome to Studio 58, a live at the Jamaica Information Service. Our discussion program coming to you live on Facebook. I'm your host, Vaughn Davis. Thank you to everyone joining us online, wherever you are. We really do appreciate it. Thank you very much for your eyes. And like how we have your attention, do us a favor, no? share this video with a friend or two or 5,000 so we can have a very lively discussion. And as you watch, remember to send in your questions and your comments so we can put them to our guest. Now, thanks to COVID-19, international supply chains and markets have been disrupted right across the globe, negatively impacting many businesses and forcing them to review their operational strategies. With both workers and customers obliged to stay home, COVID-19 created numerous direct and indirect challenges for business operators. As a matter of fact, recently the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, JBDC, conducted a survey to find out the, effect of, the effects of COVID-19 on its clients. The survey revealed that up to 25% of the businesses they, 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 you know, they surveyed had to close their doors because of the impact of the coronavirus. Another 12 or 13% of businesses had to reduce their staff. The main takeaway from this whole situation is that to survive this pandemic, many business operators have to be developing versatile business models to ensure they can pivot to capitalize on the economic opportunities that still exist. Now, to help us identify and outline strategies to help businesses survive and thrive during this difficult time is Manager for Business Advisory Services at the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, Ms. Melissa Bennett. Welcome, Melissa. Can you hear me, Melissa? Can you hear me? I'm hearing you, Vaughn. All right, Thank great. you for having me. I am so glad you are here. All right, so just before we get even further into the meat of the matter, I always like to introduce people to the different MDAs that we have here in Jamaica for those who may be unfamiliar. So just give us a brief interview, our brief intro, our outline as to what services or what the function of the JBDC is for persons who may be unfamiliar. So Jamaica Business Development Corporation is the government's entity that is mandated to support the MSME sector, micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises with capacity building and general business development services. We support them in specific areas such as training, research, counseling, um, thought leader events. We also facilitate access to markets through our Things Jamaican store, we have an incubator at our Marcus Garvey location that provides access Thank to you. space. We also facilitate access oh, to so I'm partners. Oh, muted, Melissa. I'm suddenly not hearing you. I am on. My mic is okay, unmuted. Yeah, okay. I My mic is I unmuted. I heard you like a while ago, and then you went muted again. So. Are you hearing me now? Yes, I'm hearing you now. Perfect, perfect. Go ahead. Okay. So I was saying that the general services that we provide range from research, training, um, counseling events, thought leader events and discussions such as the numerous webinars and currently we're having our employee engagement seminars. Um, we also facilitate access to the market through our Things Jamaican store that most persons would know about the brand. It's in the airports, Devonos. Um, and at our corporate office in Kingston, we also facilitate access to partners. We work with, we have a network of SBDCs that are linked to the universities primarily, as well as to RADA, and we're looking to add additional entities. Um, we have a pool of consultants that work with us to support entrepreneurs, and there are advisors and mentors, and in some instances, interns that are available to help support the ecosystem. Well, I, let me just say that you just taught me something new. I think I knew I had an idea of what JBDC did, but I didn't realize the real scope. It sounds like you have, you guys have your hands full down there with all the different services that you provide to the MSME sector. Well, we are trying to give the um, ecosystem a holistic and integrated approach to um, business development. So we want to be the driver, facilitator of how the MSMEs are supported in Jamaica. All right. I love my audience because they're already jumping online and um, putting in the questions and the comments and just healing people up and so on. People are saying, Evelyn Branford saying hello from Miami. Vita Porter-Brown saying COVID is good and bad, which we can agree with. It has had some 
bad things and some good things. Hopefully we get more good things lately. Um, June Daly from Brixton Village in London. <coughs> Donna Hurst Morrison from saying hello from South Carolina. And Vita Porter Brown, again, she's saying many of the businesses needed an upgrade. However, this immediate impact is affecting the individual and the economy, which is a thank you for your comment, Vita, and which is a good intro to from where you sit as JBDC's business advisory services manager. Give me an idea of the negatives and the positives that COVID has brought to our small business landscape. I mean, naturally, many of them had to close, which is awful, but it created lots of opportunities. So what, what, what have you been seeing from where you sit? So this is, as with any crisis period, such as a pandemic, there is um, disruption and there's also opportunities. A lot of the MSMEs in Jamaica have not taken on digital transformation as they should have in the past. And now they are forced to get into that space and to organize themselves in that manner. Um, financing and having um, cash flow uh, management constructs in place to support them should have been in place for a lot of entity. Now a lot of persons are trying to organize their financial information to be able to access um, for, um, facilities that are made, being made available to them. So a lot of reorganizing of businesses for those that can sustain or survive this pandem pandemic is happening right now. I'm loving the reorganization. And naturally, one of the things that we have seen, just like how you and I are talking via Zoom right about now, the, the, the need to draw on, on the, all the online resources that are available. But for many persons who might not feel like they can survive or they're savvy enough or they, you know, they just don't feel prepared. What, what, what kind of advice would you give to a business who comes into you and says, boy, Miss Bennett, this COVID thing I really backs me down, you know, because I never know about no computer, I never know about no internet, I never know about them something there. So what am I supposed to do now for surviving at these times? So um, skills, a lot of, and this is a weakness to, of some of our smaller entities, the one-man um, shops. Um, teams are going to be critical going forward, looking for partners and persons that can support you in areas that you're weak. So you see an opportunity and you need to reorganize. You may need to get somebody who knows about um, online um, activities, who knows how to market and create opportunities for um, your business in the global landscape. So a lot of linkages and um, partnerships are going to be necessary to support um, these small entities going forward and the bigger entities are going to have to look to innovate um, in, in the space that they're operating because some most everybody's affected some more than others but I believe strongly this is the time for innovation looking for new solutions to the disruptions that are taking place and some will be long term. All right. So one of the questions I have, so what would be the first step? As I, as I mentioned in my preamble that many had to close their doors or dramatically reduce staff. And so now they're in a position where, as you said, they're not looking for that pivot moment, that moment where they're now required to make a drastic change as to how they might be able to survive going forward. So what would you say is the first step in survival? If we're, we're presenting them a survival handbook, What's the first step in there? First step in the handbook is to assess the situation. Assess your internal situation and the external environment. Meaning, what is going on in the marketplace that is affecting me? Yes, we know the um, pandemic in general is affecting you, but is it affecting your suppliers? Is it just affecting your customers? You need to examine what is happening externally to your organization. And then you need to look at internally your resource needs, your opportunities in terms of looking at your value proposition. What is being offered? Is it still relevant? Can you look for new things from your customers? Probably um, a lot of persons should have had a customer relationship management strategy or even a list of the customers that you're serving. You probably need to engage them, build stronger relationships to see if it is possible for new products to be created from what you do. There are resources that you have that may not be suitable for what's happening now, but can be leased or, or sold or 
to other players that need it. So it's like a re-examination of what's happening internally, that is to your strength that you can take advantage of and looking outside to see who needs it and how I can make it available to them. All right, so the first step is to assess and get a sense of what's going on. Now, having made an asset, how do you begin to start planning? Because for many persons, this is probably the first, businesses probably would have been on autopilot. You know what I mean? You have your shop, it run, it run, you know, you come, you sell your things, you, you, you tally up at the end of the day, you check off at the end of the month and now, boom, COVID has presented a whole different landscape for the businesses. You know what I mean? So when you start to make that plan, because you have to make a plan to go forward, What's the first step in after you've done assess? How do you begin to chart the way forward? You um you get this is really getting into strategies now. Yes. And strategies emanate from, and I'm gonna use a book term, SWOT. People always talk about the SWOT analysis. So we talk about the external environment. It is saying what is what are the opportunities that are out there, what are the threats um, in terms of the internal environment to your business, what are the strengths and what are your weaknesses? And now you're going to identify what can I do? What are the strategies? I'm going to list them out, the key strategies that I can pursue given what I have seen. And so it would mean a re-examination of your business model. I saw you talking about the business model at the start. Mm -hmm. um, this is a one-page canvas that has nine areas that works together for you to earn money and manage the, um, your costs or your cost infrastructure. So remember, I emphasize knowing what your customer needs are. Mm -hmm. And so your customers are going to drive the solutions that you're going to prepare or create because it's not feasible for you to bring something to the market that no one cares for. So you're gonna have to engage your customer, look at what you believe your value proposition is, and then start testing it in terms of getting feedback, bringing something to the market in small, you don't have to take on a lot of um, risk, start small and get feedback and refine based on the feedback that you're getting from the customers. So you look at the value proposition, look at your target market, you look at the channels, you might not be able to use all the channels that is being pursued now, where are your customers located and start engaging them through that strategy. And then look at how will you have them coming back. So you acquire them. How do you retain them? How do you use them to refer and grow your business? So you have got some buying from some persons. You want to then use those persons to help promote what you're doing. So it's kind of starting to go organically and learning from the experience. So I want you to talk to me about the work that JBDC itself has been doing since March, April, thereabouts. How have you been helping to, to raise the overall, you know, level of our MSMEs? How have you been working to help them pivot and make sense of this pandemic and how to move forward with their businesses and survive and thrive and so on? So we have also been doing our fair share of pivoting and organizing ourselves to support them. Um, we had to transition. We normally engage through direct counseling and handholding. We have now started to do a lot of virtual counseling with clients that engage us. Um, we have a series of webinars um, from general business area to specialized areas such as the creatives and craft. Um, we have panelists, so specialists that are in certain industry that are participating in these sessions to share opportunities with the market space. So there, it's also a time for persons to re-examine their organization and start restructuring it for the growth possibilities that are going to come. And so we have been trying to let persons be aware of all the key areas of their business that needs to be strong and how to engage and grow through webinars, through virtual um, meetings, through um, partnership activities, referrals and, and linkages, as well as lobbying to government for additional assistance to the sector. So we are seeing a lot of new initiatives. We are strengthening our partnerships with both financial institutions, as well as private um, um, individuals that want to support um, other businesses. So you know a lot of our MSMEs are strong in terms of um, their professional knowledge. It's not just product-based business. So it's an opportunity for persons with specialized skills 
And we use the webinars as a means of presenting them to the market space so that persons are able to find these partners that, it, that is needed for them to transition and reorganize. All right. So one of the things I want to also ask you about is, all right, I have a business, COVID, let's say, for example, I, I don't know, I'm, I have a restaurant and I provide food, something like that. COVID come, nobody can come in the restaurant and sit down and eat. And so even as much as, you know, we can probably, you know, to take out and to go, stuff like that. But, and I need to, I, as a business owner, I need to look now to see, because maybe the takeout not going to sustain me as much as I would hope. So I need to start looking for new opportunities. How does one, what strategies would you recommend for me to sit down and maybe to, to, to help me find a new way to pivot? So how would I, and let's say, for example, do I go on the like informal survey among my consumer, my customers? Do I, what, what kind engage of- your com no. Engage your customers to see how they can be supported in this new construct. So you're no, you're no longer coming into the restaurant. Would you want to have dinner on the go? We drop it by your house. So a lot of pers there are a lot of um, innovative ways. Um, I believe in research. So we're not the only country that is being affected by this pandemic. And more developed and other economies are doing things. Look at similar entities to you in those markets. How are they? organizing themselves and looking for ways to change. So you learn from what others are trying, and then you see what you can do and change your model to engage your space. And so another thing is, I guess you, you talked about using data and so on. Are there any references or anything that, um, that you would recommend a person use to maybe help them to analyze or organize the data so that they can apply it to their business model and then be able to use it to grow? So for example, I mean, Let's say I were to look at the workforce survey or something like that and realize, okay, people are leaving this industry or something. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to get to a more specific so for, resource for, for, for a person can look at. For example, in terms of just um, parish, I'm going very base. Yeah. It's parish statistics. So what's the population of the area that I'm in? How many persons would need, if I'm delivering, if I have a restaurant and I'm in Spanish town, how many households are there and um, how many um, purchases I could get if I tried to use my network of persons because I live in that general area to start referring. Then there are formal institutions such as the JMEA and especially for those wanting to like seek um, export opportunities to engage those specialized entities, JMEA, JAMPRO, to find out what database they have in, 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 in place that persons can use. Um, the PIOJ produces an economic and social survey every year that provides data by industry and what's happening. I know it's disrupted now in terms of what's happening, but historic data can tell you potential market size. Um, Statin also has um, base data that people could use to analyze what's going on in the market space. And a lot of persons are using new technology to, to track um, where persons are. So in terms of finding um, the tools, I would say you partner with the specialized persons and you come to us at JBDC, we will be able to link you with persons to help you to look for um, opportunities in the space as well. All right. Now, this is probably something you don't need or a message you wouldn't necessarily love to promote or talk about because I'm sure you want persons to focus on survivability and being able to move on and move forward. But the truth is, COVID, like many other problems, will cause businesses to fail. You know what I mean? It's, it's a reality that we have to accept. Now, as a, this can be like truly depressing and maybe even something that um, forces a business owner to just, you know, give up. But how do you, what kind of encouragement could you provide to a, a business owner facing the threat of having their business or their livelihood taken away so that they can move forward and keep pressing on and, you know, recover and move on to something else? I would say it would require some introspection in terms of what do you have to offer? The business was just one of your outlets. What else from your innate skills and learned skills can you now create in this new environment? Um, a lot of us are natural creatives that can present, um, design, and do things that can be shared. 
I like at JBDC, we are very excited about the creative industries and we see it as a major player for a lot of our um, big persons that will be displaced in terms of the productive type business. So you're looking at film entertainment. We probably can't um, start creating the films immediately because of social distancing, but what about learning how to write creatively? What about learning how to play an instrument that films carry music? Um, animation, learning to draw, learning to make things that can become merchandising and promotion of products through avenues such as the creative industries, like, as I said, film, marketing, events, when those things start coming back. So I think we should use this time to start preparing ourselves based on the skills we already possess and look to even share these skills with persons who are already surviving. I know like in the animation industry, they are trying to get more persons involved because that it's, it's a manpower type um, industry. So persons just need to engage with the market space and look where their skills can be found. I, for me personally, I recently was at home drawing um, little girls with my daughter and, I'm, and she was saying, mommy, but you can draw. I'm like, Probably if this doesn't work out, I can go and build my skills in drawing. So I'm just exactly. saying, tap into what, what, what you have been innately given and see how best um, you can offer it to those that are thriving during this time. And also look to organize it for future business for yourself. All right. I mean, I always like to show some love to persons online. Uh, v Vita Porter Brown, who has been giving us lots of great comments and feedback. Thank you so much, Vita. She's saying sessions like this must increase. Depression is real. Talking about reinventing is depressive for some. So I, I think she's appreciating the feedback that you're sending about being able to accept the possibility that you might fail, but don't use it as a, a stumbling block or an obstacle to keep you from growing. They use that something to teach you to grow. So I'm, I'm sure she's appreciating the, the feedback, the information that you're sending out right here. Um, one of the things I noticed, um, digiti digi digitization has become like a, the major key. You know what I mean? Persons, once upon a time, they would have been slow to adopt online practices, online business models, online payments, online services delivery, et cetera, et cetera. Talk to me from where you guys sit now. How have you, how have you enjoyed, I suppose, watching Jamaica transition through this new digital revolution where so many other companies who thought or were giving so many excuses as to why they couldn't do things online are now doing it because they literally have no choice now. I am very excited by the fact that people are transitioning. It does present a major opportunity in terms of scaling into the global space. Your market space is now no longer selling your product um, to those that are in Jamaica or in its general environment. So for them to be going online and using the different avenues that are there it's an opportunity for us as a country to tap into the global market space, looking into countries we never thought of now that we have been given this online opportunity. So I think for me, I think this is big times for our Jamaican economy in terms of getting the fact that everybody's getting online now makes us available. Products and services are now available. In, in a global space, which it was already there, but we weren't taking advantage of it. So this is now a chance for us to just grow significantly. All right. Now, COVID-19 is no, basically, it's, it's been a thing that has forced persons to be agile and be able to pivot and so on. But going forward from here, I don't think anybody would like to be in a position again where something happens and your business mash up completely, just mash up and gone. So now it requires companies now to plan with problems like COVID in mind. How do we do that? You know what I mean? How do you plan for the worst, if you understand what I mean? It's a what ifs. What if? What if this happens? When we, one of the um, activities we teach entrepreneurs to do, especially when seeking funding, is to prepare a pitch deck. And the pitch deck takes you from problem to solution to the business model that you're going to use the marketing strategy and one of the key slides speaks to risk and mitigating strategies. So you're going to be saying to your investor, yes, this is a good opportunity, but these are the risks that I'm seeing, the extreme things that you never really 
You don't think that they're going to happen, but what if they happen? Then these are my mitigating strategies. These are the things I'm going to do so that it does not disrupt what is going on. And a lot of bigger entities have that as a natural part of their planning process. And we want the <clears throat> smaller business to get into that thought um, pattern as well. What the what ifs of the, the, the market space. All right, so what if so? Is there a resource or something that can help them to you know get their minds any resource that you guys offer that they can go and access and look through and start planning for these what if moments so we have been um using presenters to share the the disruption so one of the first things we had was someone who did a session on risk management and we have a pool of partners internally that um can provide that sort of support to entrepreneurs who want to look at their industry. As I said, a lot of the major players have industry information that can guide um, entrepreneurs. And our intent is to create stronger linkages that allows us to directly refer persons across the government construct as well as private sector construct in terms of getting clients. So it may not reside in paper form in JBDC, but we will be facilitating you if you come here and want that type of support through our network of government and private partners. Now, let me switch tack a little bit in terms of one of the strategies I've seen, and it kind of raised my eyebrows a little bit, it kind of, you know, because one of the biggest things about business is, is, is competition. You know, how do we box out the next man so I can make sure I stock up my play. Yes, I mean, you want to make sure you're doing the, the best for your business. But in times like this, one of the things that is recommended is partnering with the competition. And I'm sure for many people that might be a hard pill to swallow and a difficult concept to wrap their heads around. So elaborate on why that makes sense in a time like this. It's a, it, you're strengthening your um, ability to withstand the disruption. So your partner, you are strong in one ear. Remember, we talk about internally um, analyzing what's going on, and you see that your partner is struggling, and you have the ability to help, and they have the ability to help you. In a, it's a good um, fit for you to come together so that you both survive this time. And as I'm saying, I think partnership is critical because now with the digitalization that's happening, the global market space is now, well, entrepreneurs are becoming more aware of it. So as a stronger entity with partnerships, you're now able to become a major player in the international space. So for me and JBDC, partnering is very critical for how they move forward. We also teach something called a blue ocean strategy. Um, in our normal non-COVID time, but this is also an opportunity to look at um, new spaces within the market space um, with, that is not being used or, or implemented. So untested waters, think innovative, try new things and let the, the market space um, inform you of how useful your solution is. And partner with those that are already there and can strengthen the offer. That you're presenting. I mean, for any tips on what, um, how to guide that process for somebody who might be, you know, like I said, they're new to many small businesses are startups, then you're so enthralled in what you're doing and trying to survive and so on. You wouldn't even necessarily know where to start or how to approach somebody to build a partnership. Any advice as to how to begin that conversation? To, to network on platforms such as this at events that are happening online. Share your, share your needs as well as your skills. Engage, like part of the market assessment that people do, they're supposed to be assessing their competitor. And you see your competitor struggling. A call, a pr presentation, a proposal, a suggestion would be something look for um, possible persons that may be in someone that can give you a link to this person. So you have a middle person that helps you to create the relationship. Use your mentors. Um, there are some business persons that work with other experienced business owners that can refer you and, and, and um, refer you to these um, other persons. So use your network 
And also just, just this is a rough time for everybody. I think some persons are there sitting waiting for you to call. So just take a chance. Yeah, all right. And I guess that also uh, is in the same league or in the same line as approaching a financial institution. I mean, for one of the biggest challenges, I think, is that many persons don't see themselves as a business. They think, may I do a thing? You know what I mean? May I have a little operation, you know, me, me sell some things or me, me plan some crap so I sell every now and then. And to be able to survive, it might just need a cash injection or something like that. But they don't know how to approach a financial institution or somebody who has that kind of resource to help them. How do they begin that? conversation as well because many persons are intimidated by that process and maybe even don't trust, maybe they don't even trust it so what advice would you give somebody in that position who's you know weary and leery and don't feel so confident about the banks or the credit union or these payday or, or whatever lending institution well my um jvdc's first part of our um training process speaks to building a relationship with your banker um, so you did not build a relationship before, it's not too late. The banks are also impacted by COVID and they want to support you. They want to make sure that the economy continues to remain strong. So suppose you have an opportunity that is worthwhile to them, talking to someone to just get their feedback to say, is this something that you'd be willing to support? And I am willing to find a partner who would guarantee, because one of the struggles I'm seeing is that a lot of persons didn't have organized financials to be able to present, to mm -hmm. say this is happening, but probably someone who has a stronger um, set of financials and a stronger relationship can be your link um, into some of these institutions. But I believe that you should just go in and, and speak I currently have a business account with you. Is it possible, which, which some person should have done long ago, is it possible to restructure? Is it possible to get a cash inflow so I don't de default? Um, it all starts with engagement and it's, uh, it's linked to everybody's looking for an opportunity to make it through this and your venture might just be the, 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 the thing that the bank is waiting for or someone who has some liquidity to support you, as in free cash. I don't, don't want to use <laughs> yeah, right. some, some cash to support you. Right, right, right. Now, I'm just uh, quickly, uh, Vita Porter Brown, again, with the comments, really loving the comments, really loving the support of Vita. She was saying, on the subject of um, working with the competition, she's like, Miss, are you real? Ideally, that is OK, but suspicion really no. I mean, oh, there trust, I guess. Trust issue is a main challenge for a lot of our businesses, but you're going to have to take small steps and move towards that change. With any, if you're in business, it's a risk. You're going to take a chance. And we spoke about it earlier about risk and mitigating strategies. So I'm not going to tell you all of my plans. I'm mm -hmm. going to tell you this first bit, and then I see how you respond to it. If I say that it looks like you're looking to steal, then you never saw the big plan. So, okay, run with that. I will go to someone else. So it's, it's a matter of testing and trying and then seeing um, how the person or the partner presents themselves to you. No, it seems to me one of the, or what seems to be consistently coming through in terms of the, advices that you're, you're, the advice you're providing is the importance of reaching out. Don't just sit down in a little corner and say, boy, boy is me, my business, mash up, lad, what may I go there? No, it's to reach out, make a connection. Somebody might have some information that can help you. Some resource exists somewhere, but you will never know if you just sit down in a little corner and not be willing to get out there and, and you know, find out information. Am I or, right? or somebody just says to somebody, well, I don't think you would qualify you know, because um, they're asking for this. Ask for yourself. You never know. Ask for yourself. Check everything that is, is being made available to you. Even suggest strategies. Your suggestions can be a solution for the bank, for us. So engagement is a necessity for us to be able to help. And for all the other players that are helping, your engagement shows us where solutions could be found. No, it seems to me that informality is one of the biggest, or in my opinion, the factor which will most cause a business to fail. Not that it doesn't have, you know, its advantages of being informal, but 
if you're in a bad situation and you have no financials, you have no records, you have no nothing, that is the biggest recipe for failure. Am I right? Or, or, you know, is this something that you've come across in your work with, with, with different MSMEs? Well, it's a recipe for failure, but also you have an innovative solution that someone sees or an entity see that has potential. If you come to us at JBDC, we can probably help you to organize yourself so that you sell it better. So funding is not always through the banks. Mm -hmm. Funding comes in different formats. There are competitions, grants, small grants can be added up to make significant um, help over time. There are also partnering, we, talk, we spoke about partnering and partnering in terms of resource, a competent skill that you would have to pay for. Now this person is invited to be a partner so that you both can present this, this solution. So while having the informality and the fact that you were not structured for it, you can still organize yourself going forward. You can't live in regret. You just have to get up and dust off and start again. All right, I'm going to take you down somewhere and I'm wondering if JBDC has a resource to deal with this. All right, you're a business person. You are, you've assessed COVID leak. You've assessed and you said, boy, you know what? The solution is I might have to downsize my staff. Your staff, you really love and appreciate your staff. It's, you know, it's like our family, but having that difficult conversation, are there any support services to teach a person how to make those difficult decisions that you know we, you know our heads rule our our hearts rule our heads sometimes in, in you know as we are because we're all human you have your business <laughs> to run, you have your staff but boy you know you feel away and a lot of persons allow their businesses to kind of take some hits because they don't want to let down the staff or they don't want to do things that might you know put them in a bad situation you know what i mean where the staff is concerned and their welfare so how what kind of advice do you have to persons to have to make those difficult decisions to cut your salary or maybe say, boy, staff, and forgot to reduce the salary by 20% this month. Or, you know what I mean? Where do, we, where do you begin to get that kind of help? Or what Support. Advice? So for us, um, we have partners, human resource professionals that are skilled in that kind of engagement. So you want to downsize, you want to have the conversation, you probably need to, need to speak to somebody who is in that area or field of um, business that speaks to human resource. Um, you may know somebody, they're not um, a consultant, but they work as HR in bigger companies, somebody you can just talk to, to say, um, so for example, our HR person, she might know people privately that's in business and they want to ask her questions of that nature, as well as we have clients in our pool um, that um, entrepreneurs can, uh, not clients, partners in our pool that entrepreneurs can get access to. You can use your voucher. The, the Development Bank of Jamaica provides the voucher for technical assistance that helps you to pay for services such as this. So you use your voucher to say, okay, I need someone to give me some HR consultation or strategy. And we're coming with something to allow persons to look at multi getting advice from multiple um, professionals at the same time to be able to support them. So the professionals are there, persons in IT, HR, um, marketing, you name it, corporate governance, just, just finding the skill set and being a part of these. I'm loving that there are so many webinars that people go to. I think if I was in business, I would be logging the names of everybody that presents, understand their expertise, find out how I can reach to them, send them email and kind of just test that person's capability to help me share my challenges and ask if I can get a session. I know some of our um, partners are willing to talk to people for a certain amount of time just to, to see if they can help them. So reach out to us if you're having that challenge. And also, I would come, I'm not an HR professional, but I would say to persons that the staff is human. And just as I was talking about you, the owner, looking at your creative um, areas or skills, 
you can have staff start thinking in that way. The staff can become a part of your transformation. It's not just about letting them go. It's also saying, I am being disrupted. Can you think of other things that we can do so that we don't all um, have to leave? We have all these resources available to us in this business. We have this location. We have these um, computers, the different things that are available to, to the entity that are assets that the team now works with the owner to say, let's brainstorm and see what's possible. So let go may not be the first thing. Let's brainstorm for solutions. All right. So, and I guess this will, this will be my last question before we kind of move to wrap. Um, understanding how to, I, I guess the example in my mind is, that, okay, you have a business and it's being hit by COVID and then you try to do something new and different or you, maybe a leverage some other assets to try going to a different direction, but it's not necessarily working. So the idea is knowing when to pull the plug, you know what I mean? Knowing when to cut your losses and say, you know what? Okay, I think you know, people are thinking time done. I think I need to just be wise before I take a worse hit. Let me just pull up the stumps and move forward. How, a guidance on how to, when to know or when to identify what signs to look for in that regard. So when you're trying something, it's a test that you're doing when you're bringing something new to the market. So you're going to we talk about starting lean. So you're already existing, but you're going to start this new thing that you're pursuing, lean. Limited resources, you don't have to put all your resources into it. Um, and you're going to track its performance. So you set a target of what it is supposed to be doing for you. I intend to try this strategy and my hope is that I will be able to make 500,000 per month. And I'm going to see whether or not that is happening. And when you so you set a budget for what you want to see, and then you, when you get your actual results, it, it's going to vary, and you're going to ask yourself why. And you're going to reorganize it. If the why is that it's not for three months, it's don't, it doesn't look as if this is going anywhere, then it's probably a time for you to look at something else. So it's setting measures to track the success of what you're doing and making changes as you go along. As I said earlier, it's all about the engagement with the customers, so they're not buying why um, and get use the feedback to tell you when to come out or to change. All right. Great stuff. I'm going to give you the last opportunity to plug your organization, the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, which I must say is doing a great job in providing all the feedback and providing expertise for persons to be able to utilize, to grow, thrive, not just survive, but grow and thrive and manage the situation. So what are you guys doing again? How can persons reach you? What, you know, what kind of services can they get from you so that they can, you know, hear within the hearing of your voice and like, you know what, I'm going to pick up the phone and call JBDC right, right now. So um, from concept to market and beyond, we support you. So you, you want help from when you are just starting out and wanting to penetrate the market, we're there. We provide research support through directly and through partners. We provide training, we provide one-on-one -on -one counseling, we provide um, events, webinars, activities where thought leaders and specialists are able to share. We also provide access. So a lot of persons may not be able to um, access the markets on their own. They can speak to our marketing services unit that examines the offering and can give a market readiness assessment. Um, we help people to do their business models we help people to look at their strategies, to organize their financial um, situation, to prepare pitches and plans. So there are numerous things that we can work with you to do. You can visit our website, www.jbdc.net for more information. And we are on all the social media um, platforms. We are at um, 14 Camp Road in Kingston and at IRC Incubator and Resource Center, 7A Marcus Garvey, 76 Marcus right. Garvey Drive. Um, and we're located in West Milan. We're located in Manchester, um, St. James, St. Anne, St. Thomas, and Trelawney virtually. So we are, we are spreading our wings, um, wanting to find out what's happening across the island and be able to support you. 
We're working with partners. So if you're a professional wanting to give your support to the ecosystem, you should also reach out to us as well so that you can become a part of our database to support each other. As I've been emphasizing, it's all about working together to transform and grow the businesses that are in existence. Right. Our, our number, just I want to add the number, 876 Somebody online is asking, Montego Bay question mark? Yes, um, Cottage, um, Montego Bay, Impact Plaza. Um, Simone Morrison is our business development officer at that um, location. So you can contact us and if you want to get more details on how to reach out to her, she's there along with the support of um, other officers in that region. So we're there, you just need to search for us. <laughs> All right, so I guess my last question is, are you optimistic about what you're seeing and how persons, we, it's been a couple of months now and we have no choice but to find ways to live with COVID because it's not going anywhere and we're not going anywhere. So so my forgive, right? Are you optimistic in terms of what you're seeing in, in the ability of the different businesses and so on to begin the process of adapting to this new normal that we're living through right now? I'm very optimistic, Vaughn. I'm very optimistic because you're seeing people transition right now in front of you. People are learning things that they didn't know before. People are looking into avenues that they never thought of before. I'm very optimistic that more persons are going to partner and build stronger businesses during this time. I'm very op optimistic that people are going to look for solutions in the global space that Jamaica can solve and be able to take advantage of it. I'm very optimistic that the government is going to be organized in such a way to support persons along this journey. So in general, JBDC is very optimistic and we are organizing ourselves to make sure that our companies, small and medium and micro, survive. And if they can't survive, they find a partner and provide their creative skills. I recommend that those persons who have been displaced to look for opportunities that they are strong in and start building your capacity. I think during this time, it's about building your capacity for the growth that is going to come after this. After recession, there is growth. So I'm very optimistic that this is not long-term. All right, great. All right, thank you so much, Melissa. Lots of food for thought. I hope a lot of persons are edified by this and find ways to pivot, find ways to grow their business and survive because we don't want to see any business fail in a time like this. <laughs> we can't really manage that right now. We want to see as many more people get employed, more businesses grow, more businesses spring up, all of that. And I'm sure that's your mandate and I'm sure that's what you want to see as well, right? Definitely. All right, with that said, it's time for us to wrap. Thank you to everyone who tuned into our discussion, especially those of you who sent in your questions and your comments. A big shout out to Vita Porter Brown for, what, for her sustained string of comments. Really, really appreciate them. Thank you very much, Vita. And if you have a question or, or if you want to send one in, go ahead. You can leave it in the comments and we'll go through. And if necessary, you can send it through to Melissa so she can give you the right information, right? Now, remember, our audience plays a major part in our show. So if there's anyone you'd like for us to have in studio, let us know. We'll try to have that first in studio as soon as possible. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Jamaica Information Service to see who will be in studio next. And while I'm at it, you can follow JBDC on all their social media handles as well. I'm sure they've got lots of interesting and valuable information to help you, or, you know, grow your business, develop, and just win because we all want you to win. That's what we want, right? Melissa, we want them for win, don't it? Definitely, right? Vaughn. Right, so we do this every Thursday, every week, rather, live on Facebook. I've been your host, Vaughn Davis, and this has been Studio 58A Live. Thank you very much for, thank you very much for joining us, and please have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>